Hi, and the king has arrived. Oh God! Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How are you? Oh my goodness! <laughs> can you go away, Ty Adelaide? Can you see me properly? Yes. I'm okay. Yes, you can see you properly. Yes. All right. Let me get some more light on. I didn't do much. Hi. <laughs> hi, hi. Thank you so right, much so we... for um, joining us today and uh, agreeing to speak about, uh, you know, your experience and your story. Sure. So, <laughs> so just to give, uh, just to give a small introduction to people who ha haven't uh, joined in for the previous life and who don't know who I am. I'm Saumya and I just joined as uh, the health promotion coordinator at Black Beetle Health. And uh, like I said before, I'm really excited to be a part of this group. And it's, I've, I've learned a lot. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a very exciting opportunity for me. And I'm so glad I took it. And I'm so glad for, uh, for Harvey to extend this opportunity to me. And uh, for me to be able to do this live on National Coming Out Day, which I think is, uh, is really very important that we celebrate it, um, you know, and as a straight person to to be able to uh, know and understand what uh, people who identify as LGBTQ uh, face and go through. I think it's, 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 it's really very important. So thank you so much, King, for being here. And uh, if you could just uh, tell a few words about yourself to people who don't know who you are. Oh, boy. Um, I didn't psych myself up properly. Uh, I just want to say firstly uh, that it is an honor to have you on the team, Saumia. Oh, oh my you. goodness! You said you said you learned a lot. I learned a lot from you, and you <laughs> actually like re inspire me when I when I speak with you. So thank you. Um, you have so much to offer, and I don't know. I don't know if you know that, but hallelujah. So moving on. <laughs> um, so my name is King Navasa. I um I was born in the Cayman Islands, which is part of the UK, but over there in the Caribbean, next to Cuba. Um. I've been living here this time around now, uh, two years. I decided to make it my permanent home um, here in England. Um, but I had studied here previously in 2010 or 11. I came to do my, um, I came to university here. And then I moved back to the islands now back here. I'm now the um, volunteer coordinator at Black Beetle Health. And um, I have a few caps in there, I think. <laughs> but, but to simplify it, I'm the volunteer coordinator. And um, it's been, oh, it's been an enlightening journey. Um, I don't, yeah, I, I don't want to ramble, so I won't say anything more. It's been <laughs> an enlightening journey, and I love it. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, so, King, tell me, uh, how are you doing? And how are you feeling today on National Coming Out Day? Um. Well, I'm I'm kind of out of my element at the moment because <laughs> I'm I'm moving about um, while my home is being fixed up. So um, I'm as comfortable as I can make myself um, at the moment. And um, as for how I feel today, uh, you know, it's um, it makes me proud to to because I look on social media and and people are resharing their stories or their um open to discussion, you know, they're, they've opened their hearts and they've opened their minds and such to um, the fact that, you know, this is a big thing for people who identify as LGBT, um, Q plus. And um, it's, it just makes me proud. I mean, personally, do I have any, no? <laughs> no, I don't have any other personal feelings other than it makes me proud. Yeah. 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 Um, um, so, when we talk about National Coming Out Day, it's 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 become something that uh, we have to recognize and we have to celebrate. Uh, when it's it's not the same case for for uh, for for us for me uh, as a straight person, you know, it's, it's it, that's not the case. Like we've we've never really given that a thought that this could also be something that you know we need to talk about or do something. So uh, because we we've, we've never experienced all of that because it was it was a given that you know okay this is how <laughs> the life is going to be. So yeah. when um, when we when we talk about like uh, okay it's it's National Coming Out Day uh, and and somewhere um, somewhere in some corner of the world there's there's a boy or girl who's who's thinking okay it's National Coming Out Day okay I need to come out today 
I need to do this. So it's it's never been the case like that for straight people. So what's what's your perspective on on uh, on this being being something that uh, you know people of uh, people who identify as LGBTQ have to face, have to have to go through. Like think about that uh, that aspect of their life as well. That okay, I need to tell people that I'm this, but how do I do this? And why isn't the same for straight people? Why is it different for us? Um, <laughs> wow, I was a loaded one. So I just want to say that National Coming Out Day, it isn't a day to say you have to come out today. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, build your strength up through the whole year. And on this one day in England, <laughs> you, yeah. want, you want to come out. Um, it's just about celebrating um, and acknowledging that everyone's journey is different in, in terms of coming out it can mm -hmm. be really easy for some yeah really easy for some extremely difficult for for the rest <laughs> i won't even say for others for the rest <laughs> and um it's just about celebrating and acknowledging all of them, you know it's because it's almost like a rebirth when it happens yeah. um <laughs> you know when the, the the concept of coming out it's essentially saying, I don't have to hide this part of me anymore. Yeah. Here's the cloak coming off. This is the real me. And mm. I, um, I'm standing in my truth now. And I'm prepared to take whatever backlash happens. Because they're yeah. going to love you. Or they're going to hate you. Or some of them will take time you know, to warm up with you. They won't, they won't receive it well at first. <laughs> and then they'll, <laughs> they'll warm up to you. Um, so it's about just knowing that first of all that everyone doesn't have the same experience um yeah. and as when it comes to um heterosexuals or the heteronormatives um i mean it's something that i can only say it's it's good to be aware of because most of the conversations we're having amongst ourselves yeah honestly they should be directed toward <laughs> toward the general public who identify as yourself um yeah. because I mean, this is stuff we already know. <laughs> so we're, we're out there trying to trying to share that knowledge so that uh, we can live comfortably amongst each other. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I mean, I think the biggest case that everyone's probably touched on, but when it comes to um, the typical hetero heterosexual relationship, um, it's not good to shelter yourself from this stuff because what happens when, when, when the day comes around when you have a family of your own and you have yeah. kids of your own, and <laughs> you have one of them that needs to have this difficult talk with you. But yeah. I mean, if you make it easier if you are already in the know or woke, as they say. So it's like you're already open minded and they can, you know, sometimes they can feel that. It's like, you know, I think I can talk to my mother, Salmia, hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> about these things. And bam, then bam, then you're one of the very few percentage who it was easy to come out for because. Yeah. You know, you you are already engaged in these communications. You already have this knowledge, um, and so you made it easier for the people in your life and your own children to then yeah. close those things with you. And it's yeah. a healthy relationship going forward. And <laughs> the other part of it as well, those that don't want to hear it or that they, they, are they just ignorant for whatever reason. I mean, having someone come forward and say, you know. So this is how I really feel about boys. <laughs> Suddenly you feel like your whole entire belief system has been challenged. Mm. It's like, what are you saying to me? And that's the common response we've gotten. I say we, I'm talking about my generation specific, specifically. But that's the response that we, we would get. And it's like, whoo, especially coming from religious backgrounds and that sort of thing. And cultures, um, my, my, I myself, personally, I grew up in one of the most visibly homophobic regions on the planet. Yeah. So there was no talk of homosexuality there because it was e embedded in the media. It was okay for government officials to say homophobic things, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And that was part of the culture there. So coming out, it was like, okay. <laughs> it's like, do I want to start a war here or do I just want to keep safe in my lane and not trigger anyone, not offend anyone, not put a target on myself, you know? So then suddenly you, you're living in fear and you're living as someone else. Yeah. And that's that. <laughs> and um, 
that's actually what I had to go through uh, growing uh-huh. up. Because um, my, I, I, I basically, I should have known when I was about 12 or 13, but I, I made myself oblivious. I pulled the blinders over my own eyes um, because of things that family would say. Mm. Uh, my mother is, I mean, reflecting on it now in retrospect, and if I have this conversation with my mother now, uh, she'll tell me, oh, I was telling you that stuff because I could see that you were different. <laughs> and, and the neighbors talk, and I didn't want this and that, or a gay life is a hard life, and I didn't want that for you. You know, those com- those things are what goes through, or what went through my mother's head, actually. I'll, spe- I'll specify it. So, uh, yes, as Harvey just said, self-preservation. Yeah. How do I survive knowing that... Um, I mean, at that time, mind you, I, again, I pulled the blinders over my own eyes, so I wasn't aware of my own sexuality. Mm. I know I was different. I was treated different. But I just decided, you know, let me live my best life. And I ended up taking out the sex out of, taking sex out of it altogether. So I didn't get to explore in my teenage years, you know, with the hormones <laughs> are pumping or anything like that. I didn't get to do all, any of that. I had to substitute it with either just, just keeping myself distracted. So... I turned into a workaholic. <laughs> yeah. And um, essentially, I was living someone else's life because mm-hmm. that was not me. And I just, just, I had just kept living sort of this lie because the truth wasn't going to be healthy for the rest of, of, of my family to, to, to take. I say it wasn't going to be healthy because some of them would have probably brushed it off, but some of them would have um, poisoned it um, because of the sort of beliefs and culture that's there and where homophobia is is allowed. I mean, they'd even sing songs. Oh. Are, they'd even sing songs that are damning homo, homo, homosexuals. Um, <laughs> I mean, recently they've banned said songs, but it was just the cultural norm to sing these songs out loud and celebrate the fact that, you know, we come across someone that's gay, we're going to hurt them. Yeah. Um, if we know someone is doing such and such, we, 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 like, we're within the law to kill them. And it's like, ooh, that's a normal thing. Um, so essentially, I just went through my first 25 years of life just living like that. <laughs> and um, I'll be honest, I, I, um, people that have had the, their own authority to come out, I'm pleased for them because I didn't have that. <laughs> yeah. It was taken from me. So it's weird when someone else outs you. And it's funny because who, who, the person that outed me, it was my brothers. And oh. um, essentially, they had grown up hearing my parents argue about me all the time. And they didn't really get it. And um, <laughs> then my brother would start, one of my brothers just would start hinting things it's just like you know if we went to the beach for example um i'm just you know we're just relaxing a guy walks by he would be you don't want to look at him you know i'm just like what are you getting at it's like behave (laughs) you know let's sip our drinks babe uh and that just kept building up until like it was almost like an intervention where they all just jumped in the room and and was like we know you're gay and it's like okay (laughs) some of them wanted to fight me the others were just like no we want you to bring it forward because we're going to love you regardless i wasn't even ready for that (laughs) and i was like whoa okay and um this is based off of conversations they've they've heard and arguments they've heard when they were kids and they decided 10 years later you know let's bring this up because we don't want our brother to feel this way um so while i thought it was sweet of them um, because they did it out of love, um, it felt like that privilege was taken from me. That power was taken from yes. me, you know. So I didn't get to <laughs> claim my. <laughs> yes. I didn't get to claim it for myself. They kind of yes. just said, "You are what you are. Deal with it." You know, stop. And then that was hard for me as an adult to hear that because. So, okay, so what if I accept that fact now? It's like, <laughs> you know, how do I live that? How do I live this truth? And a lot, along with along with a lot of other things that were going on with me, it was just too much to handle, and it it really took a toll on my mental health. 
-hmm. and it got to the point where I thought, <laughs> this is too much. <laughs> this is too much. I yeah. just, um, you know, I started signing everything over to my friend mm. and, and they caught on to what I was doing. Yeah. So I had another intervention. <laughs> oh. I had another intervention at that point. Yeah. And um, it was, um, it was at that point that I decided, all right, I, the life I was living wasn't even my own. That was mm. someone else. Like I admire who that person was for what they were doing, but that wasn't me. Yeah. And so um, I wanted to start over. I spoke with my mother and she just said, just go back to England because you were happy there. So I did. And that's why I'm here now. And then I had to sort of grow up all over again. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I had to discover that side, that side of me properly. Um, because, I mean, deep within me, I was aware, but it was just something I couldn't express yeah. or yeah. you know and i didn't have anyone to lean on in the community that i was surrounded in in fact <laughs> um <laughs> which is ironic in the community i was a mentor and i mentored a lot of people going through the same thing that i was hiding from them so ultimately i felt that i was lying so much to everyone and it was just too much for me yeah but um shedding that and coming here and just um slowly just peeling back the layers mm -hmm. and, and I'm learning what I like, learning who I like, <laughs> um, rediscovering what things make me feel good every day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what can I do today that makes me feel good? Oh, you know, I can do that without judgment. So I decided, you know, let me paint my nails. <laughs> little, little things that just express yeah. the, the true personality that was just crammed down in the back of me. Mm -hmm. And I have never been happier. Oh, I'm so, glad. I'm so glad. But 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 I'm 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 also really sorry that you had to go through all of that. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, all of those, all of those difficulties and the challenges that you faced. It's it's not easy. It it really isn't. And being in a place where, like you said, uh, a, a lot of people were against uh, homosexuality and you know all of that. It's it's quite difficult to be able to try and find an identity for yourself. Mm -hmm. and, uh, to try and come to terms with who you are and you know uh, who you identify with and your true self so i think that's it, it's really nice and inspiring that you know um that 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 you you did go through all of those challenges but at the same time mm -hmm. you could have turned out to be very hostile towards other people or be very you know in a very negative sense you know being very rude to people or you know all of that but but you you did not do that you you've you've become a, a pioneer you know within your community and to try and you know uh, encourage other people and empower other people and like you said mentor people going through the same thing and i think that's that that's that's really great i mean i i don't know how many people would have had that courage uh, and strength to be able to do that and you know like hats off to you on that like it it, it needs a lot of <laughs> strength to be able to do that um so yeah thank you for sharing that part of the story um i was just thinking um i i do not have a first hand experience with this like uh, like i told you before and uh, i don't know anybody personally you know who who has actually gone through all of these challenges i'm just getting to know all of this so uh, there are so many things that that i've read in books or you know in in movies when they come or you know um uh, any any stories that other people say um mm. they say that this is just a phase you know it's going to pass you don't know about it and especially when when um when children of a younger age say maybe from 10 to 15 years and you know they're still in school and they're still trying to figure out uh, you know things i i've 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 known a few people they say you know that's just a phase mm -hmm. it'll pass on they go on to university college they meet uh, you know people of the opposite sex and it's all going to be okay so what what's what's your take on that like how, did you have to go through anything like that from your family or friends or what do you what do you think of that uh i mean that that whole uh, it's just the it's just the um of the phase thing i mean i i have memories of that coming from my mother <laughs> and mm -hmm. again back then 
I didn't know what she was talking about. But even um, even my foster parents, because at, at some point I was in um, foster care for two two years, two and a half years. Um, but I remember one specific conversation was with my uh, foster mother and my social worker. And um, when we were going to um, Tampa or something for Christmas, I'd picked up a pair of earrings to give um, to one of my lady friends. And it was just the kind gesture. <laughs> and, and here I am, then we sat down for like our monthly little meeting and it was this big thing in the office. Because mm -hmm. she leaned forward and she goes, he has a lady friend. And they went, oh God, thank goodness it was just the phase. And I was like, that, that meant nothing to me. <laughs> but that all yeah. because of those everything. That meant nothing to me at the point at that time. I was just like confused. I was what sixteen. I'm I'm like because I bought some earrings, and when I piece it together in retrospect, I realized what they meant. <laughs> and it's like, oh, oh, no, <laughs> it wasn't a phase. Yeah. This is just who I am. And those were just a friendly pair of earrings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's not, I mean, sexuality, I think with a lot of the um, fun that's portrayed um, in a lot of the media when they talk, when they, when they talk about um, this other lifestyle, the, the different lifestyles, LGBT lifestyles and stuff, they, they make things look fun and trendy. Yeah. So growing up to a developing mind, um, what they might have felt personally, then they um, they it gets lost with what they then start seeing in, in the media or seeing on shows that they like, um, and so suddenly they're like, well, you know what? That strange feeling I thought I had, maybe I am asexual or maybe I am bisexual, yeah. and then they start to play with that fluidity and kind of force themselves into different lanes. And um, ultimately, it turns out that, like, maybe three or four years later, they decide, mm -hmm, no, it wasn't for me. Yeah. And I think that's where the whole, oh, it was just the phase thing comes from. Just because they're, they're, they <laughs> they're experimenting with all these different things. But ultimately, I think that in itself is dangerous because it's not a phase. <laughs> you know, this is a reality for most of us. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it's our lifestyle. It's almost like appropriating it, <laughs> you know, because you're bored. It's, let me try a different sexuality today because I was bored with the last one. It's, like, yeah. it's not how it works. It's not yeah. how it works. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what I'll say about that. I don't know. I won't say anything more. Uh -uh. Yeah, I know. It's, it, it is kind of um, difficult to, uh, to try and understand, uh, you know, these, these kind of different feelings that you have, especially like when you, when you, when you don't know anything about, uh, when you weren't exposed a lot to homosexuality, but you identify as that, and to, to have the different conflicting uh, emotions and thoughts within yourself, and to have mm -hmm. that, you know, internal turmoil. How did you deal with all that uh, when you were, uh, you know, younger? And like you said, by to a twelve, thirteen, you 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 got to know. So, how how did you kind of sort of deal with all of those feelings that you had? Oh, uh, that was easy because I'm a musician. <laughs> so I just made weird songs and sang the strangest melodies. <laughs> 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 I had ways to express all those negatives. Um, so, I mean, again, I was just ignorant as well. Mm -hmm. So I was aware that something was different. Um, mm -hmm. But because of all the fears encased in exploring that different. Yeah. Um, I just kind of put it in a box and put it away. And I hid myself in my art. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, as, as I mentioned earlier, I became a workaholic because it would distract me. So while working a full-time job, I was running two businesses. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. And I had a part-time job in the evening as well. I just kept myself busy. Yeah. And it was like, you know, if I if I just fill my life with work and um, a few social aspects. No, then I don't have to worry about my personal life, my alone time, my love life. I don't have to worry about that, you know, because mm. I'm, I'm focused on work and it's going to pay off in the end. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, it's 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 actually really nice that you decided to uh, mm. to focus on your work, um, and because it would have been very easy for you to sort of resort to other uh, habits, uh, you know, um, get into get into other other things that uh, that negatively impact your life. But it's it's really inspiring to see that you you actually uh, you know focused it on something else that you knew would pay off at the end. So that's uh, that's really inspiring. I mean, uh, I, I'm sure a lot of people watching now might, uh, um, you know, will, will definitely agree to that as well. Um, you said that uh, when you were in Cayman Islands, there, uh, you know, you you uh, the, the whole environment, the surrounding was, was was very different, not very supportive, and you know, um, all of that. And you didn't get the support that you that you needed. Um, you after moving to UK, do you think? Um, I mean, to to the England, do you think that 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 has changed or has it improved or uh, how how has it changed oh well definitely has changed mm -hmm. um because it's uh so it's, it's basically a whole new world yeah <laughs> and i say that to say um there's support in place publicly there's um so many charities that help as well there's uh policies in place for protections and rights um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's just, it was almost like a different world. I'm like, wow, you know, when I stepped yeah. <laughs> and the judgment, it's like, wow, that, that box of fear, I could just kind of step out of it and fold it up and put it away because like, there was no need to be scared in yeah. that sense. And mm. I mean, um, I'm, I'm just bearing in mind, I'm coming from a region where uh, you can be <sighs> condemned, essentially. Yeah. Uh, to like the point where basic human rights are denied you just because of your sexuality. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> when I come here and it's just like, oh, that's not even a factor. Oh, I can breathe. You know? <laughs> Yeah, um, and then of course there's there, there's still work to be done because I I I understand with it being such a uh, uh, well a bigger country because where I'm coming from population was sixty thousand, <laughs> right? Um, versus here where the population is what three point five million or something, thirty million. I don't know. I don't know the numbers. Yeah. That's a three in there somewhere, but. <laughs> I, I can understand where certain things would be missed or there's certain pockets that haven't been quite touched on yet. And I, I mean, of course, that's why, that's why groups like uh, Black Beetle Health yeah. are important as well. Um, because it just makes sure that, that uh, that support is ongoing and that it's ever evolving. So, um, yeah. So Javi it? says some people still discriminate in their own subtle way. We're not there. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yes, I, I, I think. There yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I know that personally from what happened a couple of weeks ago, Harvey. Anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, we haven't been looking at the comments. Yeah. No. Uh, David says focused on work. Such a good point. Yes. Oh yeah, David. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I got lost in it. So um, sending you a lot of love. So. I think you have oh. all, all the support here and all the love here. Thank you, you guys. I'm looking yeah. at, I'm just taking a scan through now. Thank you. So uh, you, you, you mentioned um, that uh, you had a, had a similar experience two weeks back um, where in a very subtle way you had, uh, you faced discrimination. Would you like to oh. talk? <laughs> I was being messy. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Oh, see, that. even Harvey's anyway. asking you to speak on it. Is is Harvey really asking me? To yeah. Speak on it? <laughs> <laughs> Harvey, no, that's too messy. I'm not in the messy mood. Uh, I'll touch on it lightly. I don't know. Oh no, that could be a nightmare. No, Harvey. I'll just oh. say this much. Um, yeah. I. 
I don't want to say anything. Yeah, no, but it's it fine. had to do with it had to do with racial discrimination. That's what I'll say. And I yeah. didn't I didn't see it myself um, initially. In mm -hmm. fact, it was something that I internalized because I thought it was an issue with me. Right. <laughs> then, then I get a nice phone call, a um, couple phone calls that essentially said it had nothing to do with you. It was something to do with them because they chose not to hire you. Yeah. Um, or, you know, based on this. Yeah. <laughs> Harvey's like, wow! <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> I, I just don't want to get into that mess, Harvey. That's something yeah. different. Wow. <laughs> No, but maybe we, maybe we can talk about it on a different live, Harvey. We can hash it out. But no, <laughs> I got my melons. I got my water. I got a little bit of chips here. I'm good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So when when you say you've uh, you feel you you find it a little better, like after coming to the UK, right? Mm -hmm. But if there were certain things that uh, that you could change, like you said, okay, you 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 did face some sort of racial discrimination, but in the aspect of um, of uh, of of uh, being uh, of of homosexuality and you know people being a little homophobic, you know, um, towards you in a very subtle way or something, do you still face that? Uh, I mean, uh, on a day to day aspect, and do you still think about it? Okay, if I do this, they might pass a comment on you know of who I am. It could be a personal attack, so maybe I shouldn't be doing that. You know, keep thinking about all all aspects of uh, all aspects before you start something. So, do you still think that that that's there, that's prevalent, um, where you are? Uh, you know what? Because um, I did mention I was here two years now. Two years? Yeah, I moved in two thousand eighteen. So two years now. I've been back in England. That first year. Uh, yeah, those spots were definitely prevalent still. I was still treading carefully. Um, I had a traveling partner who was actually, surprisingly, very accommodating. <laughs> very accommodating, because I, uh, I would just turn to him and said, I want to try this, like, out of the blue. It's like I'd never been, like, to a proper drag show or anything like that, for example. And he's, like, the straightest of the straight, like, dude, a dude's dude. And I just looked at him and I go, I want to try this. Would you go with me? Because I don't want to go alone. And he was like, I'll do it for you. Let's go. And he was so accommodating. Um, and then uh, upon like, um, I guess, meeting more people and, and going out a bit more, and I, I started to shed it because um, I observed so many others just kind of living freely in terms mm. of living their truths mm. and it's not it wasn't a culture where um they were caught up on you <laughs> you know yeah. everyone's out there doing doing the best for themselves as a, as a, as opposed to just sitting there and judging everything you're doing with your life <laughs> uh, so that's what i kind of experienced so everyone's just so everyone that i've crossed paths with since being in england just sort of helped me strip that fear away because they were living because they were um living their truths. Yeah. It sort of encouraged me and mm -hmm. it, it it nurtured that that little thing in me that said, Come on. <laughs> what what are what are you worried about? Like let's yeah. find out. <laughs> you know, let's find out who you are. <laughs> because it's like an inner voice basically saying, Hello bitch, you've you've left me here forever. Come on, bring me out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and yeah. at one point, I even called it Coco. I was like, okay. So I was talking to myself, and I'd be like, I'm going to be Coco today. <laughs> and, but, you know, those little things just, uh, it attracted. I just found out that, like, living living in, in that truth, it attracted people that are so genuine mm. um, that, you know, <laughs> they won't... Um, they won't force me back into that corner because they were just naturally drawn to my yeah. truth. And yeah. it's, it's such a healthy circle now of support that I have. And um, I, I also had to do a bit of therapy as well because I was still anxious, um, mm -hmm. severely anxious person. And that stems from a lot of the things that I mentioned and touched yeah. on before. 
Uh, <laughs> he said we miss Coco. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, honey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Coco might be back. We'll see. But um, <laughs> I hope Coco is. Back. <laughs> she got a dead Facebook page. You can go follow her, but she's dead. She's dead for right now. No, she's not dead. She's resting. She's mm. on sabbatical. <laughs> I um, I forgot what the question was now, but. <laughs> Right. I was very anxious. Um, so I just had lots of little coping mechanisms and techniques and a lot of uh, psychological tools that I use to just help me remember and affirm that it is okay to be myself. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I, but again, I'm more of an extreme case because I'm coming from a homophobic, mm. a blatantly homophobic region. Um, whereas, you know, someone that was already born into this, I, if I was still living um, where I was living and looking at someone who was born here into this, I, yeah. would, I would see that in itself as a privilege because mm -hmm. it's, it's like, wow, you get that from the start. And um, here I am. I have to go through a bunch of hurdles to even get there. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah there's certain things I just won't comment on because I see myself as an extreme case in that sense so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I have this question in mind as well and I think Adelaide has also asked that uh, I'm mindful of the fact that we're using homosexuality but it's not a term that LGBTQ plus people would use for themselves as it relates to pathology and criminality do they still use homosexual in the Caymans <laughs> they use every word under the sun <laughs> sorry to say it so lightly but uh if i don't laugh i cry sometimes um it's a case where uh the cayman islands specifically they're well behind um with a lot of this stuff but at the moment um leading uh leading the charge in the caribbean mm -hmm. so um even though in England had to intervene, which was unfortunate, but um, the UK intervened recently and decided to uh, allow civil um, partnerships in the islands. And that was as recent as four weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we're trying to... Oh, there's just so much that we have to do to... Um, get everyone up to speed on what's politically correct and what's acceptable to say because they're still using every word under the sun to describe <laughs> LGBTQ people and apparently it's still all right, you know? So we're still trying to break away from that. Um, they even have some creative words that you haven't heard in English. <laughs> oh. Uh, and I said, if I don't laugh, I'll cry. But that's just I know, the reality. I can actually yeah. see you know, behind all of those laughs now is is all uh -huh. of the pain that you that you faced oh. throughout all these uh -huh. years. And I, I know it's it is difficult mm -hmm. to. I mean, I can't say I know because I don't know uh, what the pain is. I don't know what mm -hmm. the difficulties are. I I can only empathize. And what I would like to tell people who don't um, uh, identify themselves as LGBTQ to to be informed, you know, before making any comment or before saying something that they, they don't know about, that they don't have any experience about. I mean, I can't go out and, and just uh, just preach uh, and tell people that, uh, you know, the, 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 all the, the LGBTQ community, they face a lot of uh, problems and all of that. No, I, 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 I've not faced that. I don't know that. Mm -hmm. I can I can only be supportive uh, of of people who who have gone through all of that and be empathetic with them, but I can't go around saying that um, you know they have these challenges, you know they have these problems because I don't know that. I don't know what people have done, what people have gone through, and I uh, and and like you said, uh, I think we should we should learn and be very 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 uh, careful about what we speak and how we speak and the terms that we use and, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, and how we treat um, our fellow people, you know, um, because at the end of the day, we're all human beings and uh, there shouldn't be any discrimination, you know, um, like That's that. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, and also, 
you 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 have faced a lot you said you were in foster care and then you were also with your parents and um you did not your the authority of coming out yourself was was taken away from you uh before you were even ready and all of that happening there would have there would have definitely been like a thousand questions in your mind um you know uh, of why is all of this happening and what's wrong with me or you know things like that um but now looking at mm-hmm. how you are now at this position and you're doing so great so great and you are <laughs> in fact so many people and you are i know it, it it seems to people that you know you're always cheerful and chirpy and laughing and you know with full of energy but i know for a fact that this took work the position where you are now to be this way it took a lot of work and so what would you tell your younger self today a 12 year old king what would you tell him today run <laughs> <laughs> I mean I actually would I probably would I just say run um uh, I don't know Mm-mm. it's a lot there I just don't want to I don't even, I don't like to think back on my past very yeah. much to be honest yeah um but if I could slip a little note in I would tell young king to run <laughs> I would and I think I think he would understand perfectly why Yeah, um, yeah. But then again, But, yeah. I don't know if I I don't know if I would have made it to this point personally and spiritually and emotionally if I didn't go through all of that stuff. Mm. Yeah, know. yeah, definitely, definitely. The 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 reason mm-hmm. that you're here today, so strong and so powerful is because of the all all, all of the experience that that you went and you did not let that mm-hmm. crush you, but you you learned from it and you grew it and mm-hmm. you 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 became empowered so that that that's <laughs> yes. yeah and yeah. people who are sending you hearts and they they're saying that you're so uh, inspirational and yeah and let us learn how to be a good ally and yeah that that's that's very very important i think that's that's really important yeah everyone that's a, that's a that's a good very very good point because yeah. you were saying to me earlier that um you feel like if you were to speak on these issues on behalf of lgbt uh, plus community the, of persons that you felt that you no know, you know you that you didn't have the right to speak up on on certain things because you don't identify in that same way but and um it's the opposite we want you to we would encourage that because yeah. that shows your allyship and even yeah, if yeah, it's yeah. something you don't know specifically that's where signposting comes in because yeah. you could say well you know <laughs> i've spoken with a few of them or I have done this and that um and I've saw this publication for example or did you see this program Yeah yeah, um, yeah. I think that would clear up a lot of the questions yeah, that you yeah. have that sort of thing Yeah um, I mean um I actually meant to say that like like you said like be open minded um in in understanding and learning about you know uh, what's happening around and uh, uh learning about different experiences and knowing people's stories I think that that's so very important for for everyone to uh, to speak about their stories and hear their stories um but also at the same time i can't go around saying that yeah i know i know how difficult it is for you i know what the challenges is it, it is that you faced i can't say that because i i really don't know you know so i think that's where like i will give give you my full support on 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 this thing i like it's then that's i think that's the reason why i joined black people help because i i strongly feel that this is this is a very important cause it it is very important and nobody should actually be fighting for their identity i mean it's they shouldn't be doing that it's it it should be a given that you are who you are and you shouldn't you know be going around and fighting and saying that no this is who i am and please accept me and it shouldn't be the case i think everyone should should accept people for who they are i mean again it's easy for me to say because it's it's easy for me to say because i've not experienced uh, people you know um no no not not wanting to be with me or you know looking at me a different way oh she's oh because i i personally what i've seen i've seen people uh not one person has looked at me and says oh she's she's straight you know like oh, <laughs> right. we can say it like that like, yeah no 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 one said that to me so and but 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 it's it's completely it's completely opposite for people who you know identify as lgbtq is like oh she's a lesbian 
oh he's gay oh oh so you mean he has yeah. a boyfriend oh he's going to get married to a woman <laughs> and you know things like that it's it's um i don't know it, it just seems very different to me it's like okay <laughs> why <laughs> it is because yeah. it's almost as if when you find out someone's sexuality um sometimes you make that part of their personality you make that part of their being it's like yeah. you yeah. put the you put the sexuality first instead of realizing it's just it's a person as yeah. <laughs> all so, like i'm a whole person over here um yeah. but that's where you get things like when they just when they're starting to differentiate people they they go oh the gay one and it's like as if someone can just look at you and say no that's the gay one yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> I get what you yeah. mean though. I thought it was a little funny, but it is a very valid <laughs> point. Uh it's it is our reality and um yeah. Some of us experience the worst part of the worst I guess end of it. Um some get more subtle side of things. Um but we all go through it at some point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, it it is difficult. I uh, I can only imagine um uh, you know uh what what you what what you go through and the the things that you had to face and things that you had to hear people say you know uh, <laughs> sorry adelaide <laughs> oh sadly's comment that that's nice <laughs> oh wow yeah. um so i think i think we we've been speaking for around 15 minutes now but but i have like one last question for you um what would you like to tell um people mm-hmm. uh who are watching this today and uh, boys and girls everywhere around the world who are afraid to come out or afraid to you know embrace themselves um what would you like to tell them mm. oh mm. let me think of my pageant queen answer hmm. ah. <laughs> wow <laughs> mm. love yourself first Yeah. But that's, that's what I'll say. Love yourself first. Love every crease, love every freckle. Um love every fractured piece of that little heart. <laughs> love yourself first. That's that's yeah. the only thing I put out there. The answers come after that. Yeah. Yeah. Mhm. This has been really wonderful um uh, King. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for being here and sharing your story. It was is is very touching it was very moving and oh. so strong and oh, empowering all of us and uh, you you're you're really an inspiration to me actually because i've not heard this story oh. in the side of you so thank you so much you've inspired me today as well oh yeah. thank you samia and thank for, you guys yeah and for everyone who's on the live we have another one coming up in an hour and um, it's a it's a very special guest it's adelaide so Uh yeah we'll have Oh, uh, let's dance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me yeah. get in on that. So we have her live at uh, 4 p.m. so uh please remember to tune in and uh, thank you so much King. Thank you so much for uh, here yeah, and joining me today. I just want to before I go cuz I I'm just catching up on the comments cuz I don't see them as they pop in. Oh, oh. Um, I just want to say uh I'm going to target a few people there and yeah. say David yes <laughs> i got lost in work um purposely so be careful and find your balance with that <laughs> and um d uh, dia i love you too darling and she's part of why coco became a thing cuz coco could not do makeup so d did my makeup <laughs> she's the commented there Uh oh. my brother joined the chat so if you're still watching I love you and uh what is there was one more I saw there oh that one's long okay I'm going to skip that one thank you guys <laughs> much yeah. and maybe thank you all thank you all thank you it's, it's been a really um special conversation so thank you so much king all right thank you. you have a lovely day everyone bye 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 bye